Hey, Kyle, thanks for joining us today. Is where you're getting started. Tell us about yourself. Uh, well, um, you want the whole story from the beginning or nope. <laughs> yes. no? Okay, cool. Just, just the uh, highlights. Cool. Uh, born and raised Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, uh, live in Indianapolis, Indiana now for probably the last like decade came down here for an opportunity to be in frontline sales at Angie's list, uh, back when they were the biggest brand in the home improvement industry, uh, parlayed that into a really, really successful, uh, management career. Uh, when Home Advisor came to Indianapolis, for lack of a better term, a bit of a hostile takeover or to put them out of business, um, they kind of attracted the top 10% away from Angie's List at the time to come work for them. Uh, I had to go back to the sales uh, floor and prove that I could do, I prove I could really walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Uh, I was the first one promoted in the Indianapolis office, then had a really, really nice career at Home Advisor. Yeah. until it was just time for a change. Uh, one of my old employees gave me a call. He's the vice president of a local roofing company called Stay Dry Roofing. Um, needed some help growing there, you know, just growing, expanding, sales training, all the things that we've all done together. And then in a very short period of time, we had a lot of success. And then the same owners of Stay Dry uh, owned the company that I work for now, which is called Vanities International. And it was kind of a small business promotion. So I went from the regional, I went from running sales from stage rise, a regional, regional director, manager of sales to the VP of sales for Vanities International. So, cool. And it's pretty how cool. many reps do you have? Right now I have five. Wow. I need to have, I need to have double that in hopefully by the end of the year, but if not uh, within the year, for sure. And, and who do the reps sell to? They sell direct primarily uh, to anybody that's uh, in hospitality and development. So if you're building a brand new apartment building, senior living, hotel renovations, uh, multi-room kitchen and bath renovations. Yeah. And we, 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 we source and produce the material. Yeah. And what's that sale like? Is it probably pretty long? It's, uh, it's in, it's in the, it's in between transactional and what the typical sat, you know, enterprise sales would be. Yeah. Uh, it can be up to a year for general contractor, big, you know, big development projects where new apartments and, you know, you got a fancy five-star restaurant on the first floor and that stuff can take quite a long time. Renovations and hospitality are what I would consider transactional. They have a 90 day turnaround uh, and they can be, you know, their, their designs are spec. So you, if you can sell one holiday in express, you can sell all of them. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of our bread and butter that keeps the cash flow moving while we can hunt for whales on the, uh, on the side. And who do the reps call on? Who's the person they talk to? Uh, it's a little bit of a, a <laughs> mystery, a little bit of a mystery. So it's a, the decision maker can be different for every project. Yeah. So you may need to speak to, you may need to speak to the head architect. You may need yeah. to find the, the, the actual owner. In hospitality, it's going to be the owner. For a general contractor's job, uh, that could be the project manager. That could be the owner's assistant. <laughs> that, could be, that can be a lot of different people. So, you know, you have to do your due diligence and make sure you're asking the right questions so you don't spin your wheels with people that are just telling you what you want to hear and yeah. find that decision maker. And we're focusing a lot on developing that skill set. Uh, as we go. And how much is outbound versus inbound? Do you get inbound? A lot of inbound, yeah. which is nice. So uh, there are a number of different websites and services where contractors and developers can post their bids that say they blast it out basically to everybody yeah. like us that says, hey, first come, first serve. Uh, and we are transitioning, which is why, why the position was kind of created for me, is we are transitioning into more of an outbound skill set this company there earlier yeah th th this company has been around for 15 years and it was not a sales organization until now it was uh we took a lot of orders there was yeah. enough money to hit they did seven million dollars a year falling out of bed right and now we need to go do you know significantly more than that and um outbound calls are going to be a big part of that and i gotta believe that your clients want to commoditize you Mm -hmm. Am I right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> How do you get out of that pigeonhole? 
good discovery questions, trying to make sure that we become an asset and a, and a consultant versus just a necessary evil. Yeah. This is the first time I've ever been in a sales organization where the person that we call is going to buy what we offer. You know, I'm used to calling people that start out with a screw you and a please don't ever call me again. And you have to win over them. Yeah, they're not These guys, aware. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Or they just have a preconceived connotation you about, you are. Yeah. and you know, they just, you know, even in sales, they hate, <laughs> your job is to make them not hate you, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, That's my strategy. <laughs> yeah. And, if, and, and most people, as they go through the sales process, I always say there's this defining moment where it clicks for them where you stop being a pain in the butt yeah. and you start becoming added value. Helpful. And the yeah. only way that I've ever known how to do that is through open-ended questions, listening intently, writing a million notes, you know, don't ask a question so that you can have a reason to talk, ask a question so you can shut up for a minute and let them teach you how to ace the test. It's the yes. bold words in a textbook in high school. I didn't study. I never read a full chapter in my life. But if I, if I, Go if I knew you were a sales rep, it wasn't yeah, a scholar. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Like I still got A's. I got great grades, but I just, I read the bullet points, the bold words, yep. the day before the test, got my, got my 90% went on down the road. Uh, but if you just listen, they will teach you how to sell them. They will show you their pain points. Right. And then you recite what they told you back to them and put them in a position to where they either have to say, no, Brian, everything I just said to you was a lie. Yeah. I, or Brian, I, I like what you're saying and everything's correct, but I'm just not comfortable with you or your company yet. Or, okay, so show me where to sign. I mean, I, I, try to, I try to put them in a position where if I recite your words back to you, you I'm putting you in one of those pigeonholed spots. Right. And most people, for as long as I've been in sales, have... It's worked really, really well, and I build relationships that way, and it's led to a lot of success. And because I'm sure they want to both commoditize you and all bring it down to price versus mm -hmm. quality, whatever the attributes of your product and your company are, yep. service, uh, responsiveness, uh, durability, whatever it is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yep. They, uh, so... It, it's a little, in our business, a lot of people hear about on the news, the Chinese trade war with Trump, right? So what that really means is our business specifically, there was a called an anti-dumping tariff. China was producing quartz and marble. They were manufacturing it below cost cost and sell and, you know, dumping it in the U S market. Well, now there's a 400% tariff on anything that's quartz related that comes out of China. So it disrupted the industry to a point where now you can't, it's not a race to the bottom anymore. Yeah. It's not just a race to the price point and, you know, we'll shake, you know, you'll sign a contract and it'll, there's turmoil. Uh, the, the vendors and the suppliers in Mexico are getting bombarded with things. Uh, a lot of the shops in China went from, you know, they have a booming economy and everything works like a machine. Well, now they had to take that production and move it to Taiwan, Vietnam, Malaysia, they're not ready for it. Well, for guys like you and me, that adds value to us. Yeah. So a lot of customers don't really know how good you are until something goes wrong. Exactly. How you handle yourself when it's not easy, yeah. really set yourself apart. Yeah. So staying in constant communication, letting it, you know, this coronavirus thing, right? Like, I never, you know, I wasn't even thinking about it a month ago. And now I'm like, oh my God, please don't shut get down away the from port. it. <laughs> yeah, please don't shut down the ports. You know, and, I, and Trump's tweets were entertainment to me a month ago. And now I'm going, please don't do anything else as far as a tariff goes. Like, yeah. This could screw up everything. So how we, so their ability to commoditize us is diminishing. And they're starting to feel that pain as the developers. They're starting to understand that just because you stomp around and, own a bunch of hotels and act like a big shot that has nothing to do with the time it takes to get something from Southeast Asia through customs over to the Pacific. You know, Jeff Bezos can't get something here faster than that. Like yeah. you, you got to deal with what's happening. The market has changed. Yeah. So that's really giving us an opportunity to be salesmen and manage our portfolio and, and take care of our customers when they need us the most. And, it's really, really been beneficial for us.
really and, does. You know, when you're looking at reps, I'm sure you're doubling your team. What do you look for? So I've boiled, I've boiled a lot of, I've done a lot of hiring and I've always boiled it down to one question that I, that when I'm not certain, I'm obviously looking for extroverts, people with people motivated by money. If you can make me laugh, you, <laughs> if you can, if you're funny, yeah. that means you can think on your feet in real time. Like that's a, that's a real skill. If you can, if you're, yeah, you can connect. If you, if you can, uh, if you can spout off a few analogies and do a third party story and relate other feelings to a points in time to make me understand what you're saying, third party stories and analogies are the single greatest sales tools in the history of the world. Yeah. Because an analogy puts your, makes you think of a feeling. Right. Something connects, you already know. Yep. You can, you know, however it works, you, you feel that connection and instantly know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I'm looking for all those qualities, but. When I'm on on the fence, I always just ask them one very, it's a weird question, but I just say, what is a greater emotion for you personally? Your love of winning or your hatred of losing? And, they're, and then I say, why? Yeah. And I want them to explain. And, and the right answer is, is I want people who hate to lose. Yeah. I don't want people, I boil it down to if, if you're comfortable losing, you must be used to it. <laughs> And if, if winning, if winning gets you out of bed in the morning, you must not do it very often. Yeah. Um, watch any coach Krzyzewski interview. And he says, I need guys that hate to lose because a guy that hates to lose will show up in the gym without you asking. Yeah. A guy who hates to lose won't say things like we'll get them next month. There's nothing that makes me angrier than we'll get them next month. Yeah. Right. It's a good excuse. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, a, a, it's, it's just placating. Like, something. Yeah. And, and we get paid the most because we are the rev we're the engine. We keep the doors on. So yeah. if you want to play in this arena and make the money and get praise and we get the awards and the trips and, you know, we get, you know, we're a bunch of prima donnas. I understand that, but you got to produce. Right. And a guy who, a guy or a girl who hates that feeling, as long as they're, they don't do something unethical to prevent it. You know, I don't want you to hate it so bad you cheat and you don't cheat out of business. Right. Yeah. But I, you know, but if that means that you go home and watch mm -hmm. some YouTube videos or sign up for your class or put some time in or just pester me until you're a professional, that's the guy I want. And I'm more than willing to be there for that person. I, I show up or I'm, I'm a gym rat. I was a college basketball player. I show up first. I leave last. I, I'm six foot seven. I have no interest in power. I think power is for short guys. Uh, I just want it to be right and I want it to be, I just, I need the results Yeah. because the health of the business requires it. Not because I need accolades or, you know, for it to be my idea. And have you ever hired somebody who answered the question wrong? No, no. <laughs> I've had people, I've had people say they love to win, but I always ask the reason why, because they usually their explanation is usually because I just can't stand losing. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's one and the same, but yeah, no, I, I, I did in the beginning and then I started to see a pattern. I'm like, guys who love to win just can't take the rejection. They, they quit. Right. They, it, it, there has to be that emotional attachment to the deal. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say, Oh, you got to distance yourself from the deal in some sense. Yeah. But when you lose, you got to be upset. Mm hmm. And, yep. it, and you got to learn something from it. Yep. I don't need you flipping desks. Right. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I, but you know, and, and, and just to caveat, a lot of things I say are just, you know, just for fun. But like I've told people all the time, I go, I'd rather have you rifle your computer mouse against the wall once in a while than never act like it affects you. Yeah. I'd rather have an emotion towards you being mad you lost than just, well, shucks. Well, you know, Next time will be better. It never tends to get better. Yeah. But it's difficult. You know, you, do you like the athletic background? Because sales it. is a lot like athletics. It's, just, it's a scoreboard for fat old guys, man. It's the best. <laughs> you know, well, it's, it's also good. a performance where, yep. where you get away from, I know how to sell. Well, you yep. know how to, I know how to dribble, mm -hmm. but I bet you're a better ball player than I am. Uh, right? And, it's a performance. 
Yep, right. it is a performance. That video you did the other day was great. It made a lot of it again. I try not. To, I agree with so much of what you say that it's hard. You know, we could talk about that for hours. But you're absolutely right. Right, and and part of that activity thing, it's distant. This is what you pay me for. Like this is why I'm here. If 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 I didn't have these moments, then I wouldn't be the right guy. So I am extremely happy, but I am more excited for you for you, my team. Yeah. I love watching that glimpse. You know. I'm sure you've seen it a thousand times. You have a sales rep that just kind of doesn't get it, but they they want it, and their eyes almost go like it's like a movie, right? Like it's a close up in the movie when like it, the light bulb goes off, and you're like, oh man, he gets it now. He or she yeah. gets it, and then all yeah. of a sudden they start sounding more confident, and they understand why I'm telling them to ask the questions, and they're starting to ask questions deliberately to get responses and lead the person down the path. And that is so cool to me. I know I can sell it. I don't, whatever. But watching somebody else have that, that moment of clarity is, is awesome. And when did you have that becoming a rep? Or did you have many of them? I had many of them. So uh, I, I got obsessed with, it's a, I guess it's a, it's called Lucian, but it's basically Sandler. It's a spinoff of Sandler training. Yeah. It's a little bit more consultative. And when I got to Angie's list there, he's still my mentor today. His name's Aaron Prickle. He's runs the, he's the VP of the Lucian office here in Indianapolis. And he was the, you know, he was the only guy that I ever met that I couldn't beat in an argument. He was the only guy that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cocky. I have no doubt, you know, people, I try not to say I'm arrogant, but you and I talk baseball. I defer to you. I don't know anything about it. Basketball, human psychology and sales. I'm, pretty combative because I take bad. a lot of pride in being good at it. Right. If yeah. You know more about the NHL than me or finance. I'm sure you do. I don't even, I'm out, but I take a lot of pride in my ability to captivate an audience and, and, you know, drive emotions. And I couldn't beat him. He always, he always put me in that corner that I mentioned at the beginning where he, he made me say I was either wrong or he was right. And it was fascinating to me. So at Angie's List, you go through the first round of class that they actually pay for per headcount. And I just, I just ch chased him around like a puppy dog and just begged him to let me go back through. I'm like, I don't think the company's going to pay for me anymore, but I, please let me keep going. Yeah. And I just went through the class as many times as I could and just try. I really, really wanted to be good at it. I desperately wanted to be good at it. I come from a single mother. You know, we didn't make a lot of money. And um, Grand Rapids at the time, it's much, much different now. But Grand Rapids at the time, my friends were, they were super excited to get extra overtime and you wanted to work construction. And they were just like, man, if I just, man, if I get lucky enough to get another 12 hours of overtime, I'll make 70 grand this year. And I used to just look at it and be like, that is, please, God, don't let that be me. That's, that's it, because I had the same epiphany. I was an engineer working my butt off, built the product flat salary mm -hmm. right i'd see the sales reps driving porsches variable calm yeah. Yeah. one quit i went into the vp's office i go i want to be a sales rep he goes i got an opening <laughs> yeah yeah man right like that's all you got to you know at the age of what like 25 the first time you make a 10k commission you're like holy smokes and back then that was real money this, so this is the only expensive piece of jewelry I've ever bought. It's just a tag Carrera from like 2012. The first check I ever got, they paid me $14,000. I walked up to my boss and went, how many installments? And they're like, like on the 15th. Yeah. I'm like, for what? I'm like, who that does, who that does everybody know you're paying me this much? Like there's no <laughs> way. Well, I went, I literally bought a $7,000 bought a $7, watch out of fear that they were going to just want to come get it yank back. It back. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the only expensive thing I ever bought. Still to this day, I wear it every day kind of as a reminder. Well, I love it. But like, dude, don't, you can't ever go back. Like you can't you know, go that, back. That's another reason why I'm never really happy about success. Cause I, I've seen it be taken. I've seen man, I've seen peers, you know, get caught up in some, he said, she said, and you're the wrong demographic. So they just fire you because it's not worth the trouble. And it's just, dude, yeah. 
hold on to this for dear life and, and that's master it because it. it has the income potential of entrepreneurship without mm -hmm. the risk. Yeah. Right. Because I'm an entrepreneur now and believe me, it's pretty hard you know, ramen noodles for the first year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no net cash flow and putting it back in the business and right? I'm, seeing, I'm right there. And now the, the owner of our company is in a, the other room over here and we were going over budget the other day and I'm thinking, this is hard. <laughs> it's work. It's, it's real hard. work. It's real work. Yeah. Yeah. Stressful. And what else do you look for when you interview people? Do you look for sports backgrounds, performance histories? I ha I really just, I want, first and foremost, I want to, I want them to be likable. Yeah. I want them to be the type of person that I want to work with every day. I will take a hard worker with a great attitude that applies the coaching that I give them over a seasoned guy with a bunch of bad habits who thinks that he's going to, he's going to yeah. show me, you know, whatever. So really it's, it comes right down to just, like I said, likability. Can, can you make me laugh? How do you tell stories? How do you react to my questions? Cause I'm very tough in interviews. I try to talk everybody out of a job yeah. And then I want to see if they'll push back. Like I'm trying to give them some, some, some pain, like they're going to experience on the phone or yeah. like this, you know, like our world, you know, it, that's what our world is. Our world is just understanding that a lot of it's pain. <laughs> and if it you is. Not, yeah. yeah. And have you ever made a hiring mistake? Yes. Of course I have. Everybody yeah. has. And again, yeah. you try to get better and you try to look for those cues and, Sometimes they're, sometimes they're excellent salesmen in the interview and right. it's not necessarily what you, you're not getting what they presented, but Hey, you know, we, we correct that as we move forward and they reveal themselves pretty quickly. You know, yeah. if, if, if you lied to me and I fell for it, then my bad, but we'll straighten it out. And do you care about college education? Nope. <laughs> Smart man. Sure don't. No. I can't, no, that's, a, that's another beautiful part about our job is I don't care if you got the chops, man. I don't care your race, color, creed, gender. I don't care if you're a team player and you want to hang out with, with us and, and build something and you got the chops, come on down. Yeah. And wh uh, what have you seen not work with reps? You know, so everybody's built a little bit different. So I try to, I try to manage to the individual and motivate them as their own, Person. you know, yeah. to, I can't manage everybody the same. It won't work. So the, what won't work is when they are more afraid of how they sound or being pushy or, you know, uh, I've been saying forever, there aren't little kids across America playing telemarketer in their front yard. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> no basketball today. Let's do some cold calling. Yeah, hey, uh, hey, let's overcome objections, Johnny. Like, you want to say, how about a subject line, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. How do we? How do we write the? You know, how do we gain attention and 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 push? What's the right email subject line? Right, like that doesn't happen. You're trying to be a fireman or a undercover cop or something right. fun. And also, people especially at least when I was a kid and I think maybe it's the same as when the neighbor got a brand new car and I looked at my mom and said, I wonder how much that costs. She told me to mind my own business. She said, we don't, you know, you don't talk about, you know, talk about religion, you know, talk about money. Yeah. Well now, I'll, now for a living, every, I, you know, I'm a crazy person. I just ask everybody, what do you make? Like, am I winning? And they look at me, they look back at me like I am crazy because that's still not normal to them. So there's a lot of weird things in our business. You have to be willing to push and have a yeah. drive to get through. But if you're all people, people will always avoid the thing they're afraid of the most. So if you are the mo if you are more afraid to s sound like a salesman, quote unquote, then you are afraid to tell your kids, we can't go to Disneyland this year because daddy couldn't make enough sales then you're going to lose. But that I can't get in your head and make that happen. And some people need to be in a performance cycle or, you know, a warning cycle. Some people need the gun to their head because 
I'm way more afraid of losing my job and my benefits than I am sounding pushy on the phone. But then I go hit my number and I reset the sales cycle. And then now I'm, you know, now I got some time. So we'll get them next week. Yeah. And it all derives back to, they just don't hate losing enough. Yeah. And what skill do you wish you had earlier in your career that you either have now or you're developing now? I uh, just, I just wish I'd have just shut up and listened even yeah. more. Just this, you know, the way I teach now is exactly the way I want them to sell. I ask them a million questions right. and get them to see that it's best for them. Like I'm not just the boss saying do it cause I said so, but we talk it through and it's like, do you see why you should give more information to the estimators and help them understand yeah. the job so that they're not bogged down with work and making you late on your proposal yeah. delivery time? Like, do you see, what are some things that are going wrong in your day to day that are making you frustrated or, and they'll yeah. tell you, and then you just lead them down the path to help them. That's it. Solve, solve their own problems. Most reps just feel obligated to be talking mm -hmm. instead of obligated to be asking mm -hmm. on and on and on. And it's probably like the number one thing. If they mm -hmm. can't slow down, ask a great question and hear the other person out. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think I had the advantage of just being such an introvert or shy that talking was more painful than asking. Mm -hmm. I just came up with good questions and <laughs> work, work for you, man. It worked. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, and now you're, now I wouldn't consider you an extrovert or an introvert. Uh, not at all. Right? Like those, not vi those, those videos, like when people watch your videos, they're not realizing that you are literally walking, I'm assuming your neighborhood <laughs> with like a selfie stick. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, like film crew, film crew, film crew. <laughs> right. Like yeah. think of most people wouldn't be willing to do that because they would worry about what people think when they look yeah. at them. But in who, who cares? Right. Like I, I, I don't you know, care. Right. I know. But that's the beauty that's of it. it. And, and people have come up to me and said, what are you doing? Yeah. What is that? It's yeah. an iPhone. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you heard of it? <laughs> yeah. Like why? Like why, why would you, you be doing yeah. this every day? Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just, are you willing to, you want to win more than you, you want to win or you want to be able to say that whatever you, whatever you're most afraid of is more important than your neighbors looking at you funny. Yeah. I don't care. And, right, and that's, yeah. and, and that's just not the same from the vast majority of, of yeah. the population. Cool. Hey, this has been a great conversation. Where can people go to follow you and connect with you? Oh, geez. You LinkedIn. I'm on yep. LinkedIn the most. Uh, I think I'm the only Kyle Sherwood spelled this way in America. So yeah. if you, uh, if you type in Kyle Sherwood, I usually, I, I try to put out some tips of the day and just general things to help add value to someone's day. I'm not bloviating and all that stuff, but try to help, try to make it valuable and try to make it applicable. And are your openings in Indianapolis or does it matter? Indianapolis right now? Yes. Yep. Cool. So we, need, we have 12 employees now. We need 50 by this time next year. If you can do a, if you can do an estimate for kitchen and bath, if you know what a takeoff is, if you just know what that means, I want to hear from you. Well, you might get some strippers or something. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine too. That's fine too. You know, there's a need, there's a, there's a time and a place. <laughs>